going. <laughs> okay, Gary Sigler, author, conference speaker, prolific author. Since 1982, Gary's been sharing on the walking in the reality of the kingdom of God and the oneness of God and man. His books and tapes have reached over 70 countries of the world, and he's traveled to some of those countries. If you can download all of his audio message and writings uh, at no charge at this web address. And he, his ministry also includes building websites for other ministries, and he provides web space for them. And that website right here contains over 100 <coughs> ministries, uh, so, so look those up. So please welcome Gary. You know, this conference is uh, one of my favorite things to not only be involved in, but to the best of my ability to live. How can we possibly do that? As a human being, it's impossible to... Uh, could somebody bring me a Kleenex?
sometimes I get so caught up in intercession. That's something that's almost been lost today. But the majority of God's people are still so lost and asleep. But I am greatly encouraged because I see all over the world today a great awakening taking place. And it is so wonderful because when you really begin to awake, it takes all of the effort and the struggle out of what you're trying to become. Because you cannot become any more than you are now. You can't be any more beautiful. Oh my God, if you could see the essence of your true being. And once you begin to awaken, to be able to just live the abundant life. And not to worry about, am I going to fail today? Am I really going to be able to actually walk in the kingdom of God? And as you begin to awake, it's, it's very similar to what you experience when you sleep at night. I'm sure all of you have been in the stages of awakening, but yet still sleeping. And eventually and gradually you come awake. And that is what's happening. Don't worry about what you need to do and how you need to act and how you need to think and what you need to say. Because it's happening. There's nothing you can do to speed it up. There's nothing you have to do to shake yourself and wake up. Right now, there are horrendous energies pouring into this earthly realm from the heavenly places. And I don't mean some planet somewhere. But the energies are now entering the earth that are causing you to awake. Yes. And, if, and if you have to worry about, am I talking right or am I doing right or what do I need to do, you'll simply slow down the process. <laughs> Just be open and know <laughs> That you're here for a purpose. Amen. I came here for the purpose of being a bridge between darkness and light, between religion and spirituality. Yes. That's my purpose, to build a bridge in consciousness. You can know your purpose, too. You know, it's so hard to express in words what you know in spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. It's almost when you, when you try to express it in, in words, it, it kind of cheapens it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there were years When I began to awaken to these things, there were years when I, I used to cry because I, I knew that there was such an overwhelming presence emanating from my being, it, but I, I had no words to express, and I didn't even know how that I entered into that realm. It can be very frustrating. I'm sure everyone here has had experiences that they cannot express. 
But like I say, if you can express it, it sometimes it can't be expressed in words. It can only be known. And once it's known, oh my God, what a change in life takes place. We're, we're beginning to realize that we're not just human beings. never have been just human beings. We are spiritual beings that have descended into this realm, into this incarnation, to bring the two into one. A lot of people are denying their humanity, but I love being human. Why would I be here? Yeah. And I don't mean, when I say human, I don't mean a human being that thinks it's separated and alienated from God. There's not, there's only one life in this universe, and you are it. <laughs> Many people use the doctrine of reincarnation. And I've been asked a lot recently about, do you believe in reincarnation? And I can honestly say, no, I don't. Not in that doctrine, but I have lived many lives. But this will be the last one. You see, the purpose for you being here is to fully incarnate in this human vessel. And you will then, once you fully incarnate, and this is what is happening, we're coming very close to a process that is called full consciousness. We are, if not the last, I think we are the last planet of people who have been dumbed down purpose, purposefully. We call it the Great Fall. But humanity has been dumbed down by a process to enslave this world. You may have never even heard or thought of that before. But you have been purposely enslaved. And that's why we have to wake up. I hesitate because right now I'm not too sure about how much I should say about this. But very shortly, it's all going to come out anyway. When you fully awake in consciousness and become a fully conscious being, you will know everything. You'll know why you went through what you went through. I want to say another thing about reincarnation. The reason I say I don't believe in the doctrine of reincarnation, reincarnation says the doctrine that if you kick a dog and you're mean to a dog, you may come back as a dog. See, I don't believe in reincarnation. I believe in incarnation. I know that I chose my path when I got here. I know that. I 
That's incarnation. That's not reincarnation. Incarnation says that you come here with a job to do. So you incarnate into this form. And the purpose of incarnation is to fully resurrect out of the consciousness of being separated, fully conscious, resurrecting out of a mind that says that humanity has to die. As long as you live as a mortal on this earth, you will die. But if you don't fulfill your mission, and the only reason we don't is because of the darkness and the alienation and even the teaching and the religion that we grew up in. How, how hard do you think it would be to teach what we call the radical terrorists that have been taught since a child that their greatest service to Allah would be to blow themselves up to gain the highest existence in heaven. That they've been taught that since a child. I heard a, a, a mother on TV one day saying that she had raised six sons and she said, my greatest honor will be for them, each of them, to strap on a, a vest bomb and bring destruction. She raised them and was looking forward to them doing that. How do you think you could teach and change that mindset? We have got the same thing going on in our Christian world. Yes. You have been lied to since the very inception of you receiving Jesus. But whatever you've done, and it has caused you the awakening to start, but as soon as you are regenerated and you start going into the different Christian religions and systems, you begin to be lied to from the very first time you step inside of the church. How are you going to change that? You can't. <laughs> that used to cause me so much frustration because I used to think that if I told people the truth, they would change. Not so. <laughs> In fact, one of my first messages I gave at a, at a conference was I felt that I was here to change Christianity. Boy, that was a false concept. <laughs> And then I learned, the only thing that brings change is the spirit. Yes. And so now I can confidently say, the words that I speak, they bring spirit and life. That's the only thing that will bring change, is when you hear the truth. Not very long ago, I think it was the last conference I did, I said the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. We have all believed that without even questioning why. Why does somebody have to die so that I can live? Why? God, I don't use that word much anymore, God, because too many different versions. I try to replace the, the term God with the word love because that's what God is. <clears throat> Unconditional love. Yet we are told 
that that unconditional love that God is was so angry over Adam's sin that he required a death to get back into his graces where you could be loved and forgiven. So there were thousands <coughs> of blood sacrifices by animals to appease God so that your sins could be covered and you had access to God and he could love you again. But you know that, that, that sinful person, that, that horrible creature that you are, animal sacrifice wasn't enough. It would cover your sins, but it wasn't enough. And able for God to really forgive you and accept you back into the kingdom, he had to have a human sacrifice, his own son. I, Lynn, where did we leave our brains? <laughs> In the parking lot, I'm telling you, I've believed that for years, and I taught that. And I believed that. And it, it was a real blessing for me because it gave me the ability to know that if God loved me enough to, to, to have his own son slaughtered, I must, it must be okay. But if you believe in a God who would have his own son slaughtered so that you could be forgiven, what does that say about unconditional love? Amen. God is I'm telling you, God is love. What is unconditional love? It's love without judgment. Yes. Amen. Love without condemnation. Yes. Love without having to have a sacrifice. Yes. You see that when I when I say that, that's who you are. You're nothing less. And that's why we're being awakened. Most Christians don't do much study as far as their history goes, but to think that God would have to kill his son so that you could be forgiven. That just does not make sense. And so as we awaken, we're being brought into some truth that really sets us free. Yes. You see, in actuality, you have never, ever been a sinner. You've done a lot of wrong things. You've made a lot of bad choices. But who you are has never changed. You left the very realms of glory. You know, we idolize Jesus because we know he did. But what we haven't known is that we did the same thing. We came here to bring life to a lost and a dying creation. Oh, if you could all get that revelation. If we could see the beauty that we are. Yes. Yes. We are so much more than just a physical manifestation yes. of love. There's only a, a small part of your essence that has been incarnated into this vessel. Mm -hmm. And again, the goal is to fully awaken and incarnate and resurrect out of the realm of the dead. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's been a lot of teaching and doctrine about never dying. However, if you're living as a mortal, you're going to die. Mortals die. Sons of God never die.
There are so many spiritual beings now. There are many men who have lived and experienced, men and women, what I'm sharing with you. You can find that in the scripture. At one place I'm thinking of is Hebrews where it says, we've not come to a mountain <coughs> to be afraid, but we've come to the, the new Jerusalem. And we've come to the spirits of just men made perfect. See, that's your goal. To become a fully incarnated human <coughs> and join the ranks of the spirit of just men made perfect. Very shortly, I'll be sharing a lot more along this line. But the things that are about to happen on the earth is unbelievable. You know, you could, if I could tell you, it, it, it's impossible. You, you can't believe it. But I'm telling you, there is such an awakening taking place. Yes. People raising from the dust of the earth. Daniel talks about that. There's come a day when those that sleep in the dust of the earth, that's what we're doing right now. We're sleeping in the dust of this earth. But many will arise from the dust of the earth and shine as the stars in heaven. You could not believe how close you are to seeing that happen. Lynn's been putting pictures of, well, that last one was from the Hubble telescope on his CD album, that shows literally thousands. There are thousands of galaxies and worlds out there. And you think we're the only ones that God just created the human race and put them on planet Earth? There are over 50 different races of what, they, what is called galactic beings that are out there. And they are so much further spiritually advanced. They are literally nations that walk in unconditional love and an advancement spiritually that's beyond our comprehension. And they're coming. And I've recently been sent videos of preachers that say, oh yes, the aliens are coming. <coughs> And they're going to just ooze with love. But actually, they're demons in disguise. Now that's what the typical Christian is going to believe when this happens. Again, I want to encourage you, don't think you have to make yourself wake up. If you're asleep, can you wake yourself up? If you need to be awakened when you're asleep, somebody else will have to come and wake you up. So don't be concerned if you don't understand all this stuff. If you can't believe it, it doesn't matter. Because you are going to be fully awakened 
and begin to walk in the consciousness of unconditional love. You're going to. And the only way that won't happen is if you get into deception and you think it's devils trying to deceive you and you make the choice to turn away, that's okay. You can do that. But that's the only way that it will not happen for you is if you choose to turn away from those who are coming to help you encourage you and strengthen you and wake you up to the truth of who you are. So, that's why I say, whether you believe a word I say or not, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. Because I know the truth. And like I say all the time, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Well, it might matter for you. But it doesn't matter how much sin you're in. <coughs> it doesn't matter how much... Whatever you're doing does not change the truth of who you are. And once you become awakened, not just doctrinally, but once you become awakened and begin to experience the truth of your being, and most of you are doing that right now, I may not even know it, you realize that you don't have to struggle. The only thing I, I know that will help people that are trying to wake up, that can, it, it sounds good, maybe what I say, but how do I do it? Like I said, you can't wake yourself up. But if you spend time in the quiet, opening yourself to hear the voice, and you may not hear a voice. I very seldom hear a voice. But when I'm in meditation, it's like lightning. I mean, all of a sudden I'll just realize something that's, that I didn't know before. Or I'll get an answer to a question that I've been, you know, circling around. And outside of that, I don't know what you could do. You can't wake yourself up. But you can be awakened by someone else. So, if you just consider and are open, Perhaps what this guy's saying is true. You can ask your questions. See, that, that's why we got trapped in religion. We never ask questions. Yes. In fact, it was wrong to question the preacher. Yes. You know that he has the education. He has the formal training. He's even taught how to speak. Yep. And many of them have the charisma, and you just believe what you're told. I have literally fought religion since I was 11 years old. I didn't know what I was doing. But I used to tell my mom she'd make me go to church. And I never wanted to go. And I told her, I said, when I get old enough, I will never go to church again. Yet, saying that, I read the Bible all the time during my childhood. But I, I just instinctively knew there was something wrong with that whole scene of religion. I didn't know my purpose for being here until... It was about 1983, I think, when I first began to have an awareness and awakening to my purpose. And I had sought God since I was 11 years old. So there's great things coming. Such, there's such 
I'll tell you, love is in the air. So, you know, I, I can get alone and, and just begin to be filled with, with such an awareness of the beauty and the awesomeness of love. And it's not coming from out there, it's coming from the very yes. being that I am. When I first was regenerated, I'd walk into a church. I hadn't been to church in years. And I would weep, and I would weep, and I would weep. I didn't know why. You just get me with Christians, and I, and I just begin to weep. And when I began to travel some, I, I, I used to go in some churches. I remember one time me and Carol went to the North Phoenix Baptist Church. It was a famous preacher there, and I liked to listen to him. And we were sitting in that church, and I, and I, and I just began to weep. And Carol said, I don't remember, she had something like that. There's such an awesome presence of the Lord here. And what I realized, not at that time, I realized later on what I was sensing was not coming outside in that church somewhere. It was welling up within me. There's nothing outside of you that you need. Everything that you are, everything that you need is right within, in the consciousness of being a son or daughter of God. The more you see outwardly, the less experience you will have. Be still and know that I am God. Jesus said, quoted scripture, he said, I have said, you are gods, been quoted this weekend, I have said, you are gods, yet, you will die like men and fall as one of the princes. <clears throat> Why will they die like men and fall like the princes? Why? Because they do not know the truth of their being. Mm -hmm. Now when I quote that verse, I like to quote it this way. You are love. Yes. But if you don't somehow come to the conscious awareness of walking in that love and being an expression of that love, you will die like men and fall as a princess. Amen. I think that's enough for now.